I want to ask God why he allows poverty, famine, and injustices in the world when he could do something about it. But I'm just afraid he might just ask me the same question. Just leave it there. Leave it sitting there. Right there. Come on. Behold, I give to you the keys. Come on, y'all. Of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Dear God. Come on, y'all. Think about the responsibility this puts on us. The privilege that it puts on us to co-labor with God. It's beyond our comprehension. In other words, the truth is, the, the truth is, it was God's idea to, to create man, not only for fellowship and relationship, because God wanted to love. God is love. And God wanted to love. And God wanted to be loved. So he created man to fellowship, to, to, to have that intimacy with with him, but also to co-labor with him in his will on the earth. Y'all think about this. Go here with me in your mind. In other words, when God sees a need in a city, God looks down at Baskin Ridge and God sees the injustice he's taking. God sees the need. He sees the abuse of the city. God's not going to look at Baskin Ridge tonight and go, I've got to go down there. I've got to take care of that. No, God came to the earth one time in the flesh through his son Jesus Christ to do whatever it took so that he could look at you and me and say now through his blood his word his name I'm giving you everything you need to live in authority and victory in this earth in this life do you believe that so when God looks at Baskin Ridge now, he's not coming back to the earth in the flesh to take care of the problem. No, he's going to start looking. That's why the word says, the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro, searching the whole earth, just looking for someone he can show himself mighty through. Come on, when he hits Baskin Ridge, I want him to find you. I want him to find me saying, God, you can get through me, God. According to Ezekiel 22, the Bible says that, that he's... Israel has sinned. They're going to reap destruction. It was not God's will for them to re reap destruction. It was not God's will for them to reap destruction. So what did he do? I, I looked for a man. I looked for somebody. I was looking for somebody who might stand in the gap and make up the hedge. And then the Bible says he found none. And so the land was destroyed. So what my friend said was not true. Just because God wills something to happen. They say it's going to happen. Nothing we can do can change it. Really? Because the word says he's not willing that any would perish. But are people perishing? Yeah. He says in his word, he's, his will is above all things that would prosper and be in health. Are people in, are sick and, and needy and in lack and in want? And Are they? That's not his will. He does not desire that. So could it be that his will is not being done in the earth because there are no intercessors to contend for it? Except in Baskin Ridge there are. And they're going to make all the difference. Are you still with me tonight? Can I just, I'm going to head toward the end of my road, but will you stay with me till I get there? I'm heading that way. I see it in sight. But just stay with me a minute. Y'all, this is... Even thinking today as I was putting more thoughts in my mind, just revisiting all these things of my own journey, I just began to think again fresh, Lord, Lord, this privilege in prayer, it's no wonder Satan fights prayer probably more than anything else in your life. Because the authority, the power to move and change things for those that become intimate with God and become his friend, it's mind-boggling. And the thing about it, the thing about it is those people. How old are you, son? How much? Thirteen. What is your first name? I'm sorry? Divine? Did I get it right? Divine or Devon? Divine. I like that name. <laughs> Divine, it doesn't matter that you're 14, right? 14, 13, 13. It doesn't matter, 13. He'll take anybody. It doesn't matter how old you are. 13, how old are you, son? 15. 15-year-olds, 15 he'll take you right now. He'll take you. 
He just, he's just looking for intercessors. He's looking for somebody that can. And the deal is anybody can pray. You don't have to have all the theology understood. You don't have to have the degree in it. Come on. You can talk and communicate with God. This is amazing. The privilege of this, the privilege of becoming, hey, through the blood of Jesus, through the power of his name and his son, that we have the privilege of becoming the friend of God. The friend of God. It's not according to social status or education or no. no. Anybody, a friend of God. I love, it's why I love to study Abraham and Moses, people that became known as, even identified in the Bible as friends of God. Whoa. Y'all, they blow my mind. Abraham and Moses show us something about the ways of God that we can learn from. In fact, I love this, Psalms 103, catch this. It says about Moses, whoa, whoa, whoa. It says about Moses, he says, he says, God sh- sh- revealed his acts to the children of Israel, but his ways he revealed to Moses. For Moses and for Abraham, they found out something about God. They didn't just see the outer display of his power, which was pretty magnificent. No, they understood him well enough as a friend to know his heart, to know why he did what he did. Oh, but it doesn't even stop there. Whoa. As Abraham and Moses, you can tell this in their interactions with him. They dug into God enough as a friend and just searching him out and just seeking him, not just for what he could do for him. No, they found out something about this God that he would be reveal himself to them. They kept searching his heart out until they found hidden inside of his heart an endless well of his mercy that was actually even something his mercies that would overcome even his judgments oh oh, no I have to show you it's too good I can't I just can't I'm gonna have to read you something oh this is one of my favorite interactions watch watch Abraham let me look it up where is it it's in Genesis Abraham and God talking one of my favorites ever So again, God looks down, the city in destruction and sin. God is not going to just, you know, go fix the problem. He's looking for someone, right? Oh, he's got a friend on the earth. It's not like in Ezekiel he couldn't find anybody. With this situation with Sodom and Gomorrah, oh, he found a friend. So I love this. So the Lord himself comes down to talk to his friend in person. So watch. In verse 17, he says of Genesis, he says, Should I hide my plan from Abraham? For Abraham will certainly, and he goes on talking about Abraham. So verse 20, so the Lord told Abraham, I've heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is so flagrant. I'm going to go down and see if their actions are as wicked as I've heard. And if not, I want to know. Now watch. So verse 23, Abraham approaches him and he starts talking to the Lord. And Abraham says, watch his statement. First statement to the Lord, to the Lord. Will you sweep away both the righteous and the wicked? Suppose you find 50 righteous people living there in the city. Will you sweep it away and not spare it for their sakes? Surely you would not do such a thing. Destroying the righteous along with the wicked? Why, you would be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same. Surely you wouldn't do that. Should not the judge of all the earth do what is right? I mean, if I were walking by Abraham, I'd be like, you going with him, I'm going to go over here. I mean, mean, Lord, I mean, just the boldness of it. No, the only reason, reason he can talk like this to God, he's got some friendship going on. He already knows. No, no, no. He already knows that place of mercy. Abraham is just, come on, he's just weaving himself down into that place he knows he can find of the heart of God. And the Lord replies, if I find 50 righteous in Sodom, I'll spare the entire city. Abraham says, since I've begun, Let me speak further to my Lord, even though I'm but dust and ashes. That was wise. Suppose there's only 45 righteous people rather than 50. Would you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? The Lord says, I'll not destroy it if I find 45. Abraham pressed further. Suppose there's only 40. 
I'll not destroy it for 40. Please don't be angry, my Lord. Let me speak. Suppose there's only 30, 30 righteous people if they're found. I'll not destroy it for 30. Abraham said, since I've dared to speak to the Lord, let me continue. Suppose there's only 20. I'll not destroy it for 20. Abraham said, Lord, please don't be angry with me. But can I just speak one more time? Suppose there's only 10. And the Lord said, I'll not destroy it for 10. And Abraham stopped. And so did the Lord. But I believe, this is just my personal, if Abraham had have just said one more, suppose there's only one. I personally believe a city would have been spared. 